The Royal Australian Navy is a powerful and balanced force, capable of defending the sea lanes that radiate from Australia to the rest of the world, and providing gunfire support for troops ashore. More than 17,000 men and women are needed to run a navy that deploys an aircraft carrier, the hub of a compact, hard-hitting fleet air army. Computer-age destroyer escorts, modern submarines, guided missile destroyers, training ships, patrol boats and minesweepers. The men and women of today's Navy have to specialize in the missiles, computers, communications, guns, radar and sonar of a modern age, in addition to performing the traditional tasks to keep the fleet at a peak of operational readiness. All this adds up to a requirement for a considerable diversity of intensely thorough training. 40 miles from Melbourne, near Crib Point on Western Port Bay, is HMAS Cerberus, which for many years has met much of the Navy's training requirements. In peace and in war, young men have arrived at Cerberus, a big complex of buildings sprawling over 4,000 acres. They've looked anything but Navy-like, often a little homesick, sometimes a trifle unkempt, with a wide variety of backgrounds. Each year, HMAS Cerberus takes in about 1,000 young men to undergo 12 weeks of basic training before posting to the fleet. The course includes classroom studies in mathematics, English, current affairs, general naval knowledge, kit upkeep and basic seamanship. Square bashing gets a high priority in the early training of recruits to instill discipline and smartness. At the seamanship school, the recruits are introduced to the elementary tasks they will be required to perform when they first join their ships. The school provides training for new entry officers and sailors and conducts advanced seamanship courses and promotion tests for all seamen in the Royal Australian Navy. It's here that sailors learn the vital skills of survival at sea and how to handle emergency equipment carried by all ships. Modern life jackets in iridescent orange and inflatable life rafts are the type of safety equipment which sailors must learn to use. Simulated helicopter winching is part of the instruction. The course teaches sailors how to use a strop, which is lowered from a search and rescue helicopter to lift men from the sea. An essential part of the seamanship course is boat handling. The trainees learn how to manage the many types of craft that Navy ships carry. But there is much more to Cerberus than recruits, basic training and boat handling. This is a big establishment, with many different schools specialising in the many skills required in the fleet. They learn at Cerberus to handle boats under sail and gain respect for wind and sea. Six boats are available for recreational sailing at Cerberus. These Mirror 16-class yachts, which compete in many carnivals, provide excellent sail training because of their stability and large crewing area. Cerberus runs as many as 300 different courses. The average complement of Cerberus is 2,000 officers, sailors and rams members of the Women's Royal Australian Navy Service. More than 200 RANs serve at Cerberus, the biggest of the Navy's RAN establishments. More than half are undergoing training and the others are employed as writers, drivers, cooks, stewards and sick berth attendants. Sport plays a big part in the activities of the Royal Australian Navy's main training centre and the RANs enter into the sports programmes as enthusiastically as the sailors under training. Cerberus has a first-class running track and athletic meetings for both rams and sailors are a regular part of a comprehensive sporting calendar for the station. Athletic clubs from Melbourne are often invited to Cerberus for competition with Navy athletes. Cricket, golf, swimming, Rules, rugby, just about every sport in its season is catered for by the organisation and facilities at Cerberus. The establishment has plenty of good cricket, rugby, hockey, rules and soccer pitches 
and an excellent nine-hole golf course. When the cricket, the golf and other sports are over, and after a hard day's work on course, there has to be a place to relax, and so the club Cerberus, a well-equipped recreation hall, has been established. This is the venue for many types of social occasions. The Southern Cross Theatre in the depot, a modern cinema, screens top-rated films every night except Sunday. But study and training take precedence at Cerberus simply because in a modern navy with a high degree of specialisation, there's a lot to learn. Within the electrical engineering school today, there's a well-appointed laboratory where sailors are trained in telecommunications techniques. Specialists also learn such complicated skills as computer maintenance. The school has a turnover of up to 600 trainees a year, with courses ranging from one to six weeks. Cerberus also has a rotary machinery laboratory, where sailors learn to handle electrical switchboard equipment. The Navy's small boats are propelled by many types of engines. For this reason, Cerberus has an internal combustion engine school where sailors are trained to maintain engines like diesels and outboards. In a missile age, the gun remains an indispensable Navy weapon. Here, sailors are taught gunnery and small arms theory and are trained in drills on a fully powered practice bofus. From the training bofus, the gunnery students step into the real thing at West Head, the live firing range about 20 miles from Cerberus. They also learn firing drills for the 4.5-inch gun, a modern gun fitted in the six Australian-built river-class destroyer escorts and the specialist gunnery ships of the RAM. Every sailor is taught how to use small arms, and this is an important function of the gunnery school. At ranges across the bay from Cerberus, Trainees learn to handle rifles and pistols safely and efficiently. They get plenty of target practice under the watchful eye of skilled instructors. The rifle ranges are laid out for short and long range practice. At the pistol range, sailors practice deliberate and rapid fire at targets cut in a human outline. They find pistol shooting is no easy task. With the wide range of exacting and demanding duties sailors must perform at sea, they must be fit. The men who show them the way to physical fitness, the physical training instructors, learn their craft at Cerberus. The PT school runs comprehensive senior courses and the trainees are usually able gymnasts. Physical training instructors learn judo. This spectacular art is a popular means of keeping sailors fit at sea. The PT instructors usually extend their activities beyond their classes to form the nucleus of many of the teams Cerberus enters in most sporting competitions in its area. With the accent on physical fitness and an all-round vigorous life, a sailor must be well fed. The cookery school at Cerberus, part of the supply school, takes Navy cooks to a mouth-watering level of the culinary art. At the medical school, sick birth attendants receive their initial training. Even music has its place in the highly technical establishment that is Cerberus. Cerberus is the home of the Navy's School of Music, where young musicians are trained for one of the five Navy bands. Navy bands have won high praise for their ceremonial, concert, television and recording performances. Although the bands have an equal facility for light or popular music, martial music for parades and ceremonials, like a passing out parade for short service commission officers at Cerberus, forms the main part of their repertoire. 
This officer school, which is separate from the Royal Australian Naval College, flourished during the Second World War, then shrank considerably until the early 1960s, when new entry air crew officer training began. The school expanded further with the introduction of the Short Service Commission Officers Scheme. Each year, the school trains two seamen entries of up to 30 young officers, including Papua New Guinea division entries. Perhaps the best time to see what Cerberus does for young men is at the ceremonial of divisions. Here, the trainees parade smartly and with the bearing that exemplifies considerable pride in the service. From Cerberus, it's off to sea for most of the officers and sailors. Now comes the time to put theory into practice, to apply drills and knowledge to the operational handling of guns and missiles, radar and sonar, and maintenance of all types of equipment. The Cerberus trainees usually find that the intensity of their training and standard of qualification is such that the transition is smooth. The experience at sea, added to the instruction at Cerberus, soon has them very much part of a coordinated team that makes up a ship's complement. Despite all its machinery, electronics and weaponry, the Navy is only as good as the men and women who run it. As much as it needs ships and aircraft, the Royal Australian Navy has to have men and women who have perfected many skills. Skills that last a lifetime. Skills that are learned from the Navy in the Navy way at HMAS Cerberus. Thank you.